Hi guys, it's Mark Zickby, Mr. Sci-Fi, also knows Mark Zickby, Space Command, and some of you know that I've been doing these uh, videos on how to have a career in showbiz, uh, sporadically, and uh, I wanted to do one today about how to act, because I've been dealing with a number of different um, varieties of actors, and uh, both over my career and recently, and I uh, wanted to tell you how to act, <laughs> if you're an actor, and also how to um, treat actors. First of all, um, I'm always amazed when a director or a producer hates actors because actors are your partners, they're your collaborators. Nothing happens if they don't do their job well. And uh, so you want to treat everyone with respect, you want to treat them uh, kindly, and you also want to treat them as active partners where you communicate with them, where you basically say, okay, here's what I have in mind, here's what this is, what ideas do you have? It's um, you know, it's, it should be a two-way conversation. Also, uh, what something that Lane asks actors is, what's the best experience you've had with a director and why, and what's the worst experience you've had with a director and why? And I think that's a great, great question. Um, so, here's the basics if you want to be an actor. Most actors make the mistake of thinking that the lines are what's important in a scene or in a movie. and the lines are the least important thing. It's what's going on under the lines, the emotion, the subtext, the current running under everything, where you basically say, okay, if they weren't saying these words, if they were saying other words, how would you convey the emotion of the scene, the point of the scene? And you can see it in the best actors, that they know that when they're not talking, they can do as much or more than when they are. And it's, you know, and you can tell. Turn off a television, just watch the acting. I mean, turn off the, 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 the sound, you know? And you can see if someone's doing a good job acting, even without the sound. In fact, one of our actors, uh, I just saw a still frame of him from a scene Elaine just directed, and he's terrific. And you can tell he's terrific. You can tell he's in the moment. So, so if you're an actor, Remember, it's not about saying a line loudly or softly. It doesn't matter how you say it, if you're feeling the emotion. And the emotion should be complex like emotions in life really are. And so it's not one note, it's not... Uh, there's something called over the top where you're doing... You know, you're just... you're, you're, you're pushing it and it's not, it's not genuine, it's not authentic. I mean, my, my whole thing with actors is that... The, the two questions I ask for an actor is, do I believe it and is it interesting? Because for me it needs to be both. And... Um, and certain actors are just terrific in that way. Uh, so here's several things. If you're an actor, make sure that you're in acting class where you're doing scenes, you're, you're practicing your craft, you're getting um, access to your emotions where you can do it over and over and over and over again. Because if you're in film, and especially in television, um, you know, you may, you may have the moment and be feeling it and then all of a sudden the camera didn't get you in time or a light blew or whatever and they have to go again immediately and you have to be able to go back to that moment and be in that moment. It's about being present. It's about creating the life that's under the words and being present to the moment and the moment with the other actor. And so some actors do a lot of um, uh, thought in terms of the biography of the character and in many cases they're choosing their uh, costume very carefully because it relates to who this person is. That's all fine, but it's all toward forgetting all the preparation in the moment and just having it be, uh, you know, the part of this iceberg you don't see and being present in the moment of what you're doing. And uh, and so, so you work on your craft so you have immediate access to what you're doing emotionally so you can be free to do your, your, your performance. Additionally, um, when an actor is auditioning, and that's a very different skill, uh, you don't necessarily have to be off book, which means be off script, but you do have to have read it and know it. And if they say, are there any questions, you have to think and you just think about, well, what do you want to know? You can ask questions about the story. You can ask questions about the character. And also, if they give you an adjustment, so for instance, you've prepped it, you have a way you're going to do the scene. If they give you an adjustment, always do the adjustment. It means, like they say, well, could you do it? Um, more, more um, proudly, more haughtily. Could you do it uh, as if you're afraid of this guy? And that doesn't mean that that's how they intend. Sorry about that. That's the, the part of the street light. Um, it doesn't mean that that's how they want you to do this. The performance. They're just trying to see if you can take direction. And I promise you, that if you cannot adapt, if you do the scene exactly the way you did it initially, you will not get the role. So it's very, very important. Listen to the direction and remember. Sometimes if you're, if you're doing a film or a TV show or a play, the director may be great and be a, a, an asset and a help to you. Sometimes he may be useless or give you really bad advice. And the trick is, 
to be so skillful as an actor that you're essentially director proof. It means that you will turn into a good performance no matter what. And that doesn't mean not listening to the director, it means finding the way with what the director is telling you to do, to do it where you believe what you're doing. And uh, Michael Caine is great at that. Um, Keenan Wynn, another actor, you know, was very, very good at that. There's a lot of them. And so, so what else can I tell you in terms of acting? Um, the lovely part is that now, if you're in a short film or a web series or whatever, you're reaching thousands or millions of people. You can, you can reach um, the world without having um, a broadcast network like it used to be. So this gives you a great opportunity. Um, make sure you're doing the work that's meaningful to you. Make sure you're doing the work that is, um, that puts you on the map. You know, and that, again, doesn't necessarily have to be a loud role, but it, can, it has to be a great role. And, uh, you know, if you meet really good writers, team with them. If you meet really good directors, team with them. Decide what you want your career to be. Do you, do you want to be famous? Do you want to be just one of these people who's doing great character roles? Do you want to be... But, but, but also, don't fall into stereotypes. Don't, don't let them tell you what roles you should be playing. Figure out what roles you can pull off and, and, and just kick the shit out of. So, in other words, if you're... Because if you look at the really great actors, they're not being defined by other people. They're defining who they are in performance. So, you know, but that means that you have to be able to deliver. So if someone says, well, you can never play such and such role, well, then figure out how you could play that role. And if, you, if you're committed to it. Now, now, that doesn't mean to not listen to advice, but it has to be constructive advice, not toxic. A lot of people are just toxic for no good reason. If someone says, oh, you, know, you have no talent, you'll never make it, don't listen to them. If you have the passion for it, then, then learn what you need to learn. Get mentors who know what they're talking about. Um, don't just, don't just uh, succumb to other people's um, stupidity. Because no one can predict your future. No one can see inside your heart and see how committed you are to the future you want to create. That's up to you. But if you decide that you're going to learn the craft, if you're going to you know, do work that, that will stand the test of time, that will last, then, then do it. You know, um, I'm reading the, or, the uh, biography of Orson Welles right now, and it's a very good book, and you can see how astonishing he was how early on. But it was his determination. It was his determination to create something meaningful. It was his determination to be different from what others were and not just follow the, the, the you know, step in line. He wanted to make a mark, but he succeeded with the quality of the work. So, um... And, you know, look at, look at movies, look at TV shows, look at plays. See what, what you love, because it doesn't have to be what other people love. In fact, it's better if it's, if it's stuff that, that, that you love that maybe other people don't, don't care about. But if you love something and if you make work that you love, you'll find your audience. It, you just have to make sure you're communicating what you want to communicate, and that's where you need feedback. So, but, so that's some of it in terms of how to act. Um, you know, learn your lines, hit your mark, you know, to, to what's expected of you. Um, and also don't bring your drama, your, your personal drama, into the workplace. Show up to work. Show up to do your job, which is perform. Be that character. Be that person. Be that, that, that intent, you know. Um, because obviously if you're bringing in all sorts of and, and also you know I'm, I've met a lot of actors who, are, who have their process and they're very very um, precious about it and so forth you don't have to be you're there to work you're there to do your job I mean obviously a good director will say if you need a moment you know take it or they'll, they'll create a space it's very important for a director to create a safe space for his actors but, but there are certain actors there's one actress who hired Elaine as a coach and then wouldn't let Elaine look at her while she was acting. Well, how can you coach someone if you're not supposed to look at them while they're acting? It was crazy. It was insane. So that was her neuroses um, dictating what would impede her ability to succeed at what she said she wanted to succeed at. So, so again, remember, it's about the work. It's about the art. It's about your future. It's about your past, which you can draw upon. It's about observing the world around you. It's about finding good partners to work with. And it's about making something worth watching. So that's about it for now. We'll talk more soon. Um, buy Space Command shares, $7,500 each. It allows us to build alien spaceships and shoot more. Uh, you can call me at 323-363-1259 or email me at markzickfee at gmail.com. You'll get a percentage of my Space Command profits. Yay! And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and also um, subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi. Click this little bell down there and 
will notify you as we're posting more. We're going to be doing the more of the history of science fiction film, more about Space Command, how we're moving ahead, more about a whole bunch of stuff. And, and if you're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, our screening and our panel is at noon on Friday, and uh, we'll be doing a signing uh, later that day. So um, come and say hi, and uh, we look forward to talking with you. Take care. Bye.